joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show here in hour number two in studio, one of my favorite humans on the planet, and everybody needs to get this book that I'm holding in my hand. It is called Unbreakable, How I Turned My Depression and Anxiety into Motivation, and You Can Too. Truly one of the more inspirational people I've ever met. He is none other than Jay Glazer. Good to see you, sir. I appreciate it, brother. Hey, so hold that up. Yes, sir. So I think you can see also, um, and my voice is a little shot, but I think I'm wearing the same shirt here, the same Strahan shirt, the MSX line, Okay. as there, which just shows you that this is pretty much the only shirt I ever wear yeah, you know, outside, yeah. which is, I'm, I'm good with. You know what, Jay? I'm fine. You have, you are, I, I can attest you are still an evolved person. You have evolved, but you've got your look and it works for you. Way, and am I, am I so, a sit back guy or am I a, are you a, a sit Are you a lean forward guy? guy? Are you a lean, lean forward, forward guy? guy? I think I'm a lean forward guy. Okay, you're a lean forward guy. I'm a lean forward guy. He's a lean forward guy. Oh, He's not really? a sit back yeah. guy. A God bless you. TJ. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, TJ, you got that thing covered? <laughs> Very good. There we go. Very good. Uh, congratulations on <laughs> Thank this. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. You I look, mean, you poured you poured everything yeah. into this book, you huh? Know, I did, and you know, you know a lot of the work that I do with, with our vets and our players with, yes. with MVP. Yep. And I've been really open in that close circle. Right? I'm vulnerable. Look, look, I, man, being involved in, in mixed martial arts for a long time, like no one's questioning my manhood. So I could cry in the drop of a dime. And what we say in those circles, man, we, we really help each other. And this is an opportunity for me to help a lot more people than just our close circle and use my own struggles. And, you know, it's so it's so funny, man. I am always so proud of my scars from fighting. So I'm always willing to tell people, yeah, my back's messed up because, you know, Randy Couture and Chuck Liddell are beating the crap out of me. And so I got, I've ruptured L4, L5 uh, four times and L1, L2 twice and herniated C2, 3, 4, 5 and broke that ankle twice and woke up during surgery there and broke this seven times. And man, look, you can see I get excited. Well, now it's time we start bragging about our mental scars as much as our physical scars. That's what we need to do. So without my gray, I call it, my depression, anxiety, I, I realize I actually wouldn't be where I am right now. Like it's motivated me to get where I am and and to do all these these great things. When did you first realize that you could use it as motivation as opposed to letting it drag you under, Jay? So, well, first of all, it's um, it's my earliest childhood memory. Like I don't know what it's like to not live in the gray. Seriously. Yeah. Okay. So what? What's your how, when did you? I, I don't know if it's you know. When did you start living in gray or realize no, I, that you I, were? I just don't know another thing and man it's really hard when you live when you have my level of depression anxiety and that's why <clears throat> my darkness is able to help i think lead others so like i've got to go through it to be able to talk about it and you know this book is for people like me but people like for everybody we just went through a pandemic everybody's going through some sort of gray right and social media sucks so you know <laughs> we all think our our lives suck because we're comparing ourselves to everybody else's filtered fraction of a second and we feel left out. So it's for, for everybody, but, um, man, I don't know what it's like to wake up in the blue. Like, I just... Even just, today, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, so every single day, I wake up and there's a lot of things I got to do to get myself convinced the sky's not falling, the world doesn't hate me, everyone's not out to get me, things aren't crashing because when you have my level of depression and anxiety... You don't feel worthy uh, of being loved, you know, and you kind of can't look at yourself the way everybody else sees you. So you see all that. So as a result of me not really understanding how to love myself from the inside out, I've had to go out and do all these big things to try and get a bunch of love from the outside in. And I'm, I'm trying to get it where I could piece together uh, enough of that and enough blue where... Um, Maybe we meet, meet in the middle and, you know, and I could start feeling love from the inside out. Like that's, I'm a work in progress. I'm still going. And this book for me, um, it's a healing journey for me also. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help everybody else out. But at the same time, man, I still need the help. How many uh, have you come across in the NFL who have similar issues, Jay? Harry, you can't be in the NFL and not be crazy. Like you gotta. <laughs> it's one way. <laughs> it's true, though, but also right. like anybody who's great, you can't be great and not be crazy. Like your work ethic, and this is what we tell people in MVP or charity all the time for guys when they finish up playing in the NFL. Like you play in the NFL, that's not who you are, right? What's behind your rib cage? Right. That got you to beat out millions and millions and millions to play on that level. That's who you are, and that's a level of crazy to 
to put that kind of work in and to say, hey, I'm going to put a football helmet on every day and go bang my body into Aaron Donald. Like, you're off. You know, for <laughs> me, I'm great in chaos. I think these players are great in chaos. Mm-hmm. I suck in calm. So when, man, I was calm, oh, I'm not good, I would take three steps up in a cage with Chuck Liddell and, hey, come kick me in the face. Like, hey, give me more CT. Like, that's off. I'm off, right? And um, what I think the problem in the, the NFL mm-hmm. is they – don't talk about it enough. They aren't, you know, it's um, it's it's not being used as a badge of honor like it should be. And that's what I'm trying to get everybody to shift. Like, it, I'll tell you this. Every single person I have had the conversation with mm-hmm. in the world of fighting, the world of football, whatever it is, um, and I only started coming forward with this in these terms, if you will, within the last two years. It's gotten me closer to every single one of them. So anybody who's afraid at home, for the shame, I'm guaranteeing you that it will get you closer with someone when you could share. And you never know when you share who's going to come back and say, oh, my God, <sighs> you? Me too. And I've, I've had an awful lot of that. Um, people, look, I hide it. Great. I'm always laughing. Big personalities. Yes. I'm, right, I'm going through life relentless, relentlessly. Um, so I've hit it all these years. And... Uh, I didn't hide my crazy, but I always hid my pain. Who told you these stories for your book here, Jay Glazer, that uh, you can, that um, that were people were like, yeah, me too, and oh, and, and a story you're, you they they allowed you to tell yeah. or wanted you to yeah. tell or anything like that. You so got... the the wildest thing, um, again, I, I agree to write the book. People have been trying to get me to write a football book for years. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm not looking over my shoulder for the rest of my life with the, the sure. secrets that I know. Right, but a mental health book. A book where I could be of service, absolutely, I'm in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the way I describe my gray, I call it living in the gray, depression, anxiety. Um, man, I really pulled my skin back. And actually, I've actually never said this anywhere else. I'll tell you. Okay. Um, <laughs> oof. Uh, I like saying it. But um, I stop going to treatment. My treatment is all the time. Mm-hmm. I stopped going while I was doing the book so I could really feel it to describe it to people and still pulling myself out of that. Really? Yeah. It's taken me uh, a year, but I wanted to, uh, and you see again the pain. Yeah. Um, I wanted uh, to really, um, I wanted to be fully of service to people. So I wanted to sacrifice. Uh, and make sure, man, I really got people to understand what your son's going through, your daughter or your wife or husband. I got a message from a grandmother yesterday that finally she has the words to have a conversation with her family. She's never known how to say it, how to describe it. So we talk about mental health, but no one describes it. So now I'm able to describe it here and describe it in really, really stark terms. Um, but the... The conversation uh, in the book you're referring to when I pull my skin back and I really tell people what it was, it was a year ago this week. I was down in Cabo with Andrew Whitworth, who, like, Whit goes through it. Like, Whit, people don't realize it. He's same like me. Like, he uses his darkness to go do great things and be the Walter Payton Man of the Year, which he's beyond that. He's he the is. man of the freaking century. Um, the left tackle of the Rams. Of the Rams, the captain of the Rams, right? And... You know, Witt and I were with McVay down in Cabo. Um, I actually went down there. Um, this was the Stafford, was the, the famous Stafford weekend? The famous Stafford weekend. When I tell you Stafford, it was not planned. He literally happened to check in a hotel the next day. And McVay was supposed to leave. He only stayed because, like, Whitworth had a room for me. I was, actually, I was going through some stuff. And Witt's like, hey, bro, what are you doing? Like, we got a room for you here in, uh, in Cabo. Why don't you come down? I'm like, nah. He's like, why would you not? Like, don't just sit there and isolate. Right. So I was like, yeah, okay. So got on a plane, went down to Cabo. McVay said, all right, if he's going to stay, then I'm going to stay. And 
Then Stafford happened to check in our hotel the next day. And, and now they're checking into the and, NFC and then, Championship and game. And, you know, and Stafford likes to say, I said, wow. it started in the hot tub, which we did. And I don't know why he it. <laughs> and then I went back to you know, Whitworth's room, but get your mind out of cover. Not like that. Right. Um, and then that's when those two dudes fell in love with each other. And, man, they made it happen right there. Right. But the night before Stafford got there, mm-hmm. we're at dinner. And McVeigh's like, man, so... And Whit and I are kind of talking about the darkness. And they're like, man, we're proud of you for writing this book. And Sean goes, hey, so to fully describe this, like you just wake up like sad every day? I said, yeah. He says, why? I'm like, because I have depression, moron. He's like, no, thanks. Great. He's like, you know, and then we get, he goes, no, I want to I want to know. Mm-hmm. Like, t- t-. And then um, I said, man, think how much better of a coach you could be if you could really, really understand this. And he's like, yeah, like, how many of the guys in the locker room you think have it? And Witt goes, all of us. He's like, you too? And he's like, yeah, what do you think gets me to, like, go and smash my body every day for 40 years? Like, so Sean yes. McVay didn't know that Whitworth, you we know, kind it. of, right. Right, and especially from your coach and everybody that, so people are so afraid in the league, like, man, if I show this vulnerability, right. it's going to be weak, and they may cut me, that's the fear. They're not going to cut you, okay? They're going to put their arms around you. They're going to help you. They're going to love you up. Look what happened with Lane Johnson this year. Calvin, they cut him. Calvin Ridley. Right. Calvin, they, their arms are around him. But all the people who reach out, they will help you, and they'll get you closer. There's another player, and, and teams are now starting to call me about it, saying, hey, can you help us? Can you help us? How do we talk to this person or right. you know, give us some, some insight? Hey, man, just tell them you, you, you got you know, his version of what's happening. That's not the truth. Put your arms around him. Let them know that because we a lot of us think the world's against us when it's not. And as a result, when you think the world's against you, you push the world away from you. Right? Mm-hmm. So when you push the world away from you, it's self-fulfilled prophecy. Then, oh, see that? The world is against me. But you're the one doing the pushing. So for this book, when I recount the story or, or when I describe to people what the gray, what it's like living in the gray, it's the conversation with Sean that went on for for a while. And I said, Sean, think about how much better of a coach you could be again. And he said, well, how many of our players have it? And I said, that's not the question you need to ask yourself. The question is, how many of our, how many of your secretaries, how many of your scouts, how many of your assistant coaches, how many people in your building, how many people, you just don't know. And man, it was, it's, it was incredible to see, because Sean, his life's amazing. Like, <laughs> if I could put yeah. someone's life in a pill and make an antidepressant, it would be Sean McVay. And, like, the worst thing that ever happened to him is he didn't win the Super Bowl second year coaching as the youngest, youngest coach in NFL right. history. And his parents look like, they're like the, the people in the picture frames when you buy pictures, you know, <laughs> picture frames at Target. So, <laughs> so he, he got it. Man, he got it. And this year, he's called a bunch saying, I'm so glad we had that talk because it's allowed me to be more vulnerable with my team. And a lot of times, too, the leaders, they don't know they could be vulnerable because they got to think, well, I got to be it for everybody else. Right. So they lead everybody else, but, man, who takes care of the leaders? Unbreakable. How I turned my depression and anxiety into motivation, and you can, too, with Jay Glazer. And um, on the back, you got Guy Fieri, who is just the— Fieri. Fieri. Fieri, pardon me. Guy yeah, Fieri. Yeah. Um, the best. Hey, TJ, Demi Lovato wrote uh, a uh, a blurb as well Love in the her, back. Yeah. He know, yeah, he knows Demi very yeah, well. Love her to death. Yeah, um, love her. Tomlin, Randy Couture on the back, and you could have gotten anybody you wanted, brother. Um, so Sean Payton has a great quote in the book okay. in that in that depression chapter. Because mm-hmm. <clears throat> I did, I man, I, I I use a lot of my, and it's not just this book isn't just about the gray. It's overcoming for business and how I got to where I am in my career and this unbreakable mindset I use for business and for training and for fighting and football. And there's a practical jokes chapter because I use laughter a lot and there's pillars to get through it. And the practical joke chapter is who, um, I, that, yeah, that uh, is how we, how we long is my muse. You'll see what I've done. Amy. Oh, fantastic. Uh, it's fantastic. And, um, that's fantastic. But Sean Payton had a line in that it said, hurt people, hurt people. Mm-hmm. Think of that, right? People are hurting. Hurt people hurt people. I mm-hmm. was like, wow. So 
I uh, I put that in the book. So spoiler. <laughs> no, I mean, there's so many stories in yeah. here that you've you've barely yeah. even scratched the surface here. It's part of you know your career yep. and how you got to where you are. And if there's three items, three messages <clears throat> uh, that you want people to get out yep. of this, go for it. There, what do you there's have? three pillars there to I say to get through the gray. It's a prescri- prescriptive book for anybody at home, right? And number one is find your team. That's what MVP does, right? Mm-hmm. Find your team. Right, and my team could be anywhere from my Fox NFL Sunday crew, um, you know, obviously my fight team, God's my team. Like this, mm-hmm. I have team. Um, your friends are your team. Your family is your team. There's different teams. <clears throat> Number two, be of service. So there's, I list several ways in the book. Even when I was broker than broke, and you know what, I man, I was making ninety seven hundred bucks a year for the first ten years of my career, and tried to outwork the world, so I couldn't get another job. Um, like part-time job to pay the bills. Mm. I had to work 80, 90 hours a week to try and beat everybody else there. Right. You know, covering the NFL and the Giants and then the league. <clears throat> but even then, I found ways to be of service. Right. And there's several different ways. Like, I still do it to this day. I'll go to like the 99 cent store and buy toothbrush, toothpaste, handy wipes, deodorant, gloves, pen, paper, socks, and hand them out to homeless. It cost eight bucks. Right. So there's ways to be of service. Being of service. It will lift your soul. And the third one is laughter. And I laugh an awful lot. You guys see me on Fox laughing. Yes. A lot of it is, yeah, because I want to entertain you at home, but a lot of it is also to mask and, and kind of get, mask the pain, but also break through the gray for the blue. Like I, I like to say the gray hates laughter. So there's a chapter in there after some heavy stuff. Like in order to go through the heavy stuff, I got to make you laugh so we can go deal with it. Mm-hmm. But again, there's a whole practical jokes chapter of... Uh, this is the perils of being friends with Jay Glazer <laughs> and the crap that I pulled on Strahan and Howie and oh anybody and everybody you can imagine. Even like the governor of California. I tried to I, oh. just, I just met him one day. And um, I have this joke I play where if you leave your phone in front of me, I will take your phone and then text someone from your phone, usually a vile message, and then erase the sent text. <laughs> so you have no idea you sent it. So I've had Strahan oh admit a lot my. of things to people wow. that Gosh. are really Awful. Like, I have no idea why he's still friends with me, except he has no other friends. But, <laughs> well, because you sent him the vile text and erased it from his phone, Jay. So Gavin Maybe that's Newsom's why he has no friends. And, and we meet him one day, and Strahan's telling him what I do. is, oh, don't ever leave your phone in front of Jay. And a dude leaves his phone right there. Like, two minutes later, I'm like, what's his fault? The governor of California? Yeah. So I go grab his Gavin phone. Gavin Newsom's phone? I go, go, go grab his phone, and the last guy he was texting was Bill Clinton. I was like, oh, this is great. And Michael's like, no. I'm like, shut up. And Stray's like, no, shut up. And so I start texting, and then Gavin turns around. Oh, my God. And jumps over and grabs it. I was like, it's your fault. I, we just told you this, you know. And I Did wasn't it able sense? to send it. No, I wasn't you? able to get it. Oh, <laughs> my God. It would have been my, yeah, it would have been a masterpiece. But, a no, masterpiece. Uh, <laughs> but I don't care. And there's, there's, there's stuff in there. I don't care. There is a, I got to tell this one. There was one night, Strahan and I were out in in, uh, New York City. (laughs) And uh, this waiter came over. Man, this waiter was just, he was having a bad day, but he was taking it out on us. So, and it was bad, though. He was just being so not cool to us. So, at the end, I'm like, I'm going to mess with this dude a little bit. And I pull out my um, blue, my my, uh, insurance card, my health insurance card, which looked like a credit card for whatever insurance I was on back then. And Michael's like, stop. I'm like, shh. So I put it in the bill, and the guy comes over. He, he goes over, and he comes back over. He goes to run it. He comes back over. He goes, I know I'm wearing all white, but I'm not a doctor. And I just deadpan, and I go, I don't get it. And he's like, you give me a health insurance card. I said, yeah, I know. I'm covered here. I said, uh, listen, I'm not going through this again. This is one of the restaurants restaurants in my, met, in my network. I already met my deductible. I'm not going through this again. Please run it again. <laughs> <laughs> and did he do it? Cause and he's like, because I just said it so like, sir. Yeah, yeah. and Michael's like kicking me under the table, like, please make it stop. I'm like, no, nah, forget this guy. So the guy, could, but if you just say it like that, I said, yeah. no, listen, I met my deductible. It's already, you know, I, but he's just, so he goes over, starts running again, and he holds it up to the manager, and the, the manager looks at him, looks at the card, looks at him, and he's like, it's a health insurance card. What do you and the guy comes back over. I said, no, no, I know, I know. I said, look, you were just such a yeah. blankety blank to us. I said, I feel you're having the worst edge, and I'll loosen you up a little bit. He goes, what was I really? I said, complete moron to us. He goes, I'm sorry, but you're right. I was having a horrible day, but you're right. 
This did lift the up on me. You see that stray? I'm a walking blessing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, when when stray when stray was doing that April Fool's Day gig the, uh, with with yeah. his teeth. Yeah, I was. Did, I had did you know? To do with that. No, did you know? Did you know, or did you? Were you like the rest of us? Were like he couldn't really do that. Like he. He couldn't get rid of the gap tooth no, like well, that. that. Did he get you too? He did it. He well, he did it, and then he went on vacation and realized. Yeah, no. Like he tapped oh, out. Crap! Like this thing's kind of getting out of hand here. It right? did. <laughs> we were talking about it. We thought it was real, right? No, and no, we we yeah. had a whole segment no, no. on the show saying, you know, no. Erlacher already left the bald yeah, brotherhood no. behind. He better not leave. How do you deal with that with Erlacher, man? No, no, no. Because no. he left you behind yeah, too. He left us all behind, yeah. But no, I, with Stray, I was like. I, I knew it wasn't real, but I, I was like, I don't know how you're getting out of this one now, but he got himself out of it. He, well, he, he was just a big <laughs> gag, man. People were like, I know. I was okay to have a gap because of you, and now you fixed it. And like, oh, I'm like, oh. I know. Look out. The, jump off the ship. Jump off the ship. I know. <laughs> he turned it around. He turned that ship around. Unbreak and he had no idea because he was on vacation. He turned his phone off. Jay Glazer here. Unbreakable, how I turned my depression and anxiety uh, into motivation, and you can too. We're all books are acquired uh sean payton who you yep. obviously know very well what you know what, the grind of coaching man mm -hmm. it's a serious thing and yeah. again i don't know if anything that you're talking about in this book plays into what the grind of coaching right. could be or because people are like yeah. okay he left three years 45 million as long you know and you could see he really loved all the people he said goodbye yeah. to because i think he just stopped talking two seconds ago well, look, from his press right, conference right. i think it's still going so, on uh, so it, i said it, to him i said hey hey bro your opening thing went on for an hour. Yeah. And first of all, you screwed this thing up. You want to do, and we talked right before end. Yeah. And he's like, I want to do this Ted Lasso thing. And I was like, yeah. And, just, and then he comes on. And he's like, you know, I love Netflix and Ted Lasso. I said, it's not even on a Netflix, bro. It's on Apple. It's like, right. what are you doing? Well, it's his movies on His <laughs> right. movies yeah, on Netflix. Goes. So, you know. So, no, Sean and I, man, we, we started talking about this about three months ago. And he kept going back and forth, back and forth. If you watch me doing my, during my coaching carousel on you know, week 18 of, right. of Fox NFL Sunday, I said after, I think, who's out, I said, and by the way, you'll probably have another opening or so from, you know, a coach that could step away that, because um, it's been a, a tough year or two with COVID, and that's what I was talking about. And he was gonna, he went into, originally we were going to break it that Tuesday, mm -hmm. right after, and I was like, he said, but I want, you know, talk to Mrs. Benson, well, Mrs. Benson told him, hey, why don't you take a few days off and, and really think about it. So Sean said, you know, I'm not going to do it yet. Ms. Benson wants me to take a couple days off. Well, a couple days turned into two weeks at Cabo. And then when he came back, it was better like, hey, you, this is your story. This is your deal. You know, however you want it to right. come out, which it should be. If a guy says to me, you know, at first he's like, yeah, you should, I'll, let you, I'll let you break it at mm -hmm. first. But then if he says, you know what, I want to do this, that's their prerogative, you know, to do that. Um, but we were talking, and, and the thing too is, I didn't want to go full in on it also because he did kept changing his mind. Yeah, I mean, like you might have said, yeah. you know, after all that two weeks yeah. in Cabo, but I can only imagine mm -hmm. he, uh, what, what, just today, just like as I said yesterday, just yeah. today, he's not, has to, to talk this, about I think the, I spoke to him this morning. Yeah, he's have to worry about the combine or what's going on at the senior bowl. I spoke to him this morning or last night. Either one, I was giving, you know, crap about his. One hour. His, oh, his, yeah, preamble. Opening, yeah, his preamble. His, it became an amble. Yeah. <laughs> a post amble. An amble. An amble. An amble, amble. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, so he is, you, you think he is definitely out for 2022? Because yeah. you know, a lot of people yeah. think that he's just trying to. Yeah, hustle you know, another. Yeah, but even so, if that's the case, you know, he's not going to retire for three days and get traded to another team. I don't think so. No, I right. think he. But uh, I think it's just hard for. Here's the thing again, MVP, it's. A charity for transition. Yes. So I think he wants to step away, but at the same time, there's probably a fear like, okay, well, I've never not been on a team. I've never not been part. I mean, this is going back, right? right? High school, college, yeah. NFL. He's never not been in a locker room. So I think some of that, too, it kind of jolts you a little bit. So he's like, oh, okay, well, I think I could do this, but I'm not sure I could not be around my locker room. Well, every coach I've ever worked with, former coach I've ever worked with on television still has, I mean, you never get yeah. that com competition wanting to talk to the refs, even if you're, yeah. you know, on the sideline or yeah, uh, I, of, of a broadcast, you know, like they, they the, and, and, and he even said, he thinks he'll, he'll get back into coaching at some point. Yeah, I mean, he also mentioned TV, he mentioned a lot of stuff. Yeah. He's always, his, I mean, I think he's 
you know, mentioned to me, you know, a year or two. He said, but I don't know. They go on long. I don't know. I don't know how much I'm going to love this or not love this. Right. Um, you know, and I think, too, for a lot of coaches, you know, the losses are so hard on them and their families. And when it gets to the point where you can't enjoy the wins anymore, that's when you got to kind of move it along. No right? question. And, then, and ever- all those guys, who, you know, Jimmy Johnson will tell you the same thing. And, you know, I, I haven't talked to Bill Coward, but I'm assuming they all go through the same thing. Jim Mora Sr. told yep. me that the loss, the, the, the sting of the losses and the depression of the losses mm-hmm. – lasted so long yeah. and was so more more intense yeah. than the excitement over the wins. But when the wins you know? stop being exciting, that's when it's time to exhale and take a breath. Right? And that's yeah. what happens to a lot of these guys. The losses beat them down so much sometimes. Happened to Madden, they, happened yeah, to yeah, Vermeil. Yeah, they you know, can't I mean, enjoy the wins anymore. You so do you think that's what that's part of it what happened with Sean or it's well, just again it's it's just been a lot over the over the years. Right. So this is something again he started Tell me about three months ago, and he was pretty. He seemed at peace with it three months ago, mm. and then all of a sudden he kind of, you know, oh, three weeks later he'd have an idea, and that oh maybe if I so it again or he'd be really excited about something and almost made the playoffs. Almost made the playoffs. I know <laughs> he was in position. Like if, yeah. and, 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 he texts me, he goes, "Well, the Rams screwed me again." Speaking of possible rule changes, um, <laughs> do you think there's anything to uh, the overtime, the way that thing that ended in, in Kansas been, City? We've been in the league for how long? I know. This is my 30th year? This is your, how long have you been in this league? This is my 19th. Okay. I don't ever remember a year we don't talk about it. Or it's not brought up. It's right. not broached at the owner's meeting. It's always. So this isn't something that all of a sudden right now, this is, and they, it's always talked about. And yeah, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's, I don't, having the, the, you know, a coin toss, the luck of a coin toss, that has nothing to do with your preparation or your team. That has nothing to do with, that's not an even playing field, in my opinion. So it should be, I mean, they obviously were getting there well if you only kick a field goal, but I, I think you should have a level playing field. Yeah, I, I, but this is a league, as you know, where <clears throat> they don't like change. They, Boy, well, do they certain not. changes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I kind of like the idea of getting rid of an onside kick, or you could still do it, but you can do one shot from your, you know, thirty-five on a fifteen yard. I love onside yarder. kicks. I wish onside kicks were easier. I, 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 you know what I mean? It just yeah. It changes. I would love for them also to tell the officials like, hey, okay, it's not half thirty a game. Last football question, then we'll return to the book and send you on to your day, sir. Um, how do you think Rogers is going to play out? What do you think? I thought he was going to. I was really like early in the week. I did interviews and. And uh, they say, you think Aaron? I say, yeah, I think he goes on. And now I flip flop the other way. That you he think stays. he stays? I, so, again, it's Aaron Rodgers. So, I'm never going to try and predict what Aaron is really, what's going on between his ears. Um, but I was, I thought he was going to move on. And now I think it, there was a, I'm, I'm more convinced that, that I wouldn't be as surprised, I guess, if he ends up staying. And I would have been three days ago. Well, you know, the conversation today, as soon as you leave here, I'm sure it's on your phone all over the place, too, is the hiring of Nathaniel Hackett yeah. in in Denver, yep. where, again, you know, all word out of there is he gets it on his own merits. He's his own man. No, he did so, crush the interview. Yeah, he crushed the interview. Okay, yeah, which is great. Did. But, you know, what helps is Rodgers, if mm-hmm. that whole idea that the Broncos were interested in him on draft sure. day last year, maybe this would be attractive to Aaron to, sure. to go in a different direction. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, that's that's right there, hitting a square in the face. But it, I'm just just in the conversation, that, you know, the conversations that I have, I was a little more convinced. Well, again, I would have been. I said three days ago, I'd be surprised if he was in Green Bay. Now I'm saying I wouldn't be surprised if he's in Green Bay. But I'll probably go back and forth on that as much as Sean Payton did. So yeah, over the last few days, because the more I talk to people, the more I'm okay. Well, that's okay. Well, and it's people who know Aaron, so. Mm-hmm. I get convinced both ways. All right, last one for you is why do you think it is so difficult to share what you're sharing in this book for so many people? Yeah. Because shame. It's the shame. For, but, it's who's, the shame. but who's the one making them feel ashamed? Yeah. So Strahan's know? been my best friend for 30 years. Right. It wasn't until two months ago that I told him, man, we were supposed to do dinner, and I said, I can't go out tonight. He said, why? I said, man, the beast got out of the box. Man, the monster got me. And... You know, when I when my I have attacks, it's um, it's a physical, visceral reaction for me. I feel it here, 
behind my rib cage, in the left side of my gut, and my joints ache like I just had a 50 round fight. It just exhausts me. And, and it hits you nights, out of nowhere? Out of nowhere. This one woke me up in the middle of the night. And it just, it's not always like that. This one was particularly bad. Is it a dream or is it just like no, no, no. where somebody says something no, and it you sparks just something? Up, I just or? wake up thinking my sky is falling and don't know why. Okay. I could just fight back against it and that's it. Like I'm never going to let this thing win. Right. That's it. I will never tap out against this. I'll always fight back against it. Um, and I told Stray, I can't go to dinner, man. I'm just, man, just exhausted. The, the, the monster, you know, monster kind of you know beat me down here today. And he said, you want me to come over? I said, no. Well, you want to just talk about it? I said, no. And he said, I've been your best friend for 30 years. Why have you never told me about this? That's the first time I ever talked to him about it. 30 years. I said, I don't know, man. I don't make up the rules of this thing. With you, I felt ashamed. Maybe because we're so competitive and it, I don't know, but... Had I not felt shame, I would have had somebody for 30 years who would, was willing to come over, was willing to talk. That's why we got to take the shame out of us. I'm saying this story right here. You guys don't look at me any differently. You don't look at me any weaker, no. right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. as much as, I, like I said, I, I'm trying to learn how to brag about my mental scars and have all of us brag about it to be a badge of honor. And I think we're so, like I said, we've all been through this pandemic and we've Social media makes us all think our lives suck. So everybody has some form of gray in their lives. And yes. I think if we could bond together as a team right now and walk this walk together, we could beat this thing behind all the way back into its hole where it belongs to be. But it's a daily battle, man. It's First, something I'll, I'll deal with for the rest of my life. Um, by having more teammates out there, which I'll have now from writing the book. Yeah. It will give me the help I need to. So I have to say, the first thing is to talk about it. Now you've got this on the mantle forever. Yeah. And um, because, you know, you, you, you hear it all the time that mental health or mental illness yep. is a sign of weakness. Hell like, no. Okay. Now, do I, do now, I seem weak? <laughs> another person who sat in this <laughs> chair, <laughs> dude, another person who sat in this chair, Tyson Fury. Yep. Yes. Exactly. Same thing. Same conversation, talking about the gray or mm. or his version of it, and so that's why it doesn't compute. Like I hear yes. it, and I'm not thinking that person's it weak. Make any I'm sense. thinking that person yeah. needs help. You know, when I see Antonio Brown tell Brian right. Gumble, I don't have, you know, I don't need mental help. Yeah. I have mental wealth. Mm. I think to myself, that's a sign that this person still can't talk yeah. about it or be feels authentic with himself yeah. right and so I, I that's that's where i'm yeah. at and i'm wondering how we get to more people yes. to where i'm at and, you and, know and even where or where like, at yeah even where the days or the the periods that things are going great for me i still have to practice this just while we practice anything else in sports anything else you do in life yeah mental health you got to practice it every single day of your life and we all got to, you know, build each other up, right? And and as one of our vets, J.C. Glick, says, we, we lift as we climb, right? We got to lift each other up. And, yeah, it's certainly not a, a sign of weakness. And listen, I, I know people at home go, what's this dude have to be sad about? Or this life, his life is great. He has money and fame and fortune, and my life is great. I get to sit here with you and, I mean, Don Johnson's on this show. Yes, he is. <laughs> like, come on. Like, my life is unbelievable. Incredible. <laughs> But between my ears sucks. And that's just just the fact of the matter, right? And it's something that I've got to learn to deal with and I've got to use to motivate me to, you know what, man? If I did not have depression, anxiety, I would not be as successful as I am. It would not have forced me to, to go out there and be relentless with everything I want to go get. So, man, for the first time, um, maybe God blessed me with depression. Well, to use your phrase, we've got your back, Thank you, you know, buddy. and um, and everybody in the NFL community does as well. Yeah. I mean, everything that you've done with merging vets and players and, you know, the Hall of Fame now reaching out yeah. to you to the merge their Andy brand Rolf, yes. with yours and Fox yeah. and this book and everything. And, you know, we love I, I love you, Jay. I mean, unbreakable love how I too, turned my depression it. and anxiety into motivation. And you can, too. We're all books can be taken. See you next week.
Thank you, brother. for the Super Bowl I'll as well. I'll see you this week. Excellent. We got, we got you know, Sunday. We got, we got again that's going, no, going no. on this week. Yeah, it's a pretty so we'll big one. we'll be there. We're, we're doing our show from uh, SoFi. Oh, yeah, right, right down there. there. We're right across the street there from us. Like you should, us, yeah. should we have some sort of like anchorman <laughs> moment? Like <laughs> me and Mooch <laughs> and right. Kurt and Irv. We come out there I don't know. We've we, got 14 people on the show, who, like who literally. I think we're good. Me, Stray. I'll take me, Stray, and Howie versus you guys. We're okay. Ah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, we got Bradshaw on the show first up tomorrow. I could start Ask something. Him. You start something. I could start something. Well, we, we got his back. I'm but just telling you. I know that. If you're involved, though, Jay, I will just stay put in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> what am I? What am I even mentioning? What the hell am I talking about? Check it out, uh, uh, Unbreakable. How I turn my depression, anxiety, and motivation into motivation, and you can too. Where all books are required. Jay Glazer here. Love you, man. Love Appreciate you too. It.